Hello everyone, Lead Code Practice Time. Today we are going to solve a problem called Product of Array Except Itself. So let's see um, what the problem is. So given an array, nums of integers where n is larger than 1, return an array output such that output i is equal to the product of all the element of nums except nums i. Alright, so for this example 1, 2, 3, 4, the first uh, output is 24, which is 2 times 3 times 4, second one 12, which is 1 times 3 times 4, uh, so on and so forth. Um, okay, so there are some constraints. It's guaranteed that the product of each element of any prefix or suffix of the array fits in a 32 bits, and also solve it without using division in all of n. Okay, so the first one is to clarify the question and uh, think about edge case. So in this one, I think we understand what the question is asking us to do. Um, for the edge case, um, actually it is well defined. Uh, it says uh, n, uh, the length of the array is larger than 1, so we don't need to worry about if the m if it is empty for the input or there is only one number. Uh, and it also says no overflow um, for the prefix or suffix of the array for the product. Um, so we should be good to go. Um, and also it says uh, without using division. So if we use division and uh, we just define everything to be 32 uh, bits of the integer then it could be it could it could overflow but if we don't use division we should be good so the second thing after we find uh, what we are going to do is to find a solution for this problem so to how to solve this problem it reminds me of another question called trap rainwater um, so essentially what we are going to do is we are going to define first define a array let's call it left product so for each the length of the the left product array is the same as the input array and for each element uh, it is holding a product of all the numbers to the left of the current position within the input array. So let's give an example for it. Let's say we have nums defined as uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4. The left product is going to look like something like the first one is 1, which is a placeholder. The second one is 1, uh, which is uh, equal to the first number. And this, the third one is 1 times 2, uh, the product of the first two numbers, which is 2. And the last one is uh, 1 times 2 times 3, which is 6. And similarly, we are going to introduce another array. Let's call it red products. Let's say um, the last element, it's a placeholder, which is 1. Uh, and then the second last is 4, equal to the last number in the input array so on and so forth. Uh, we are going to generate the second number in the array as uh, 12 and the last number to be 26, uh, sorry 24. Then in the output um, we are going to uh, do so for each number within the output array it's just the product uh, of two numbers. The first, the one number is the corresponding uh, number in the same place in the left product and the second one is the corresponding number in the right product array. So for this one uh, it is first one is 24 which is 1 times 24, second one is 1 times 12 which is 12, third one is 2 times 4 which is 8 and the last one is 6 times 1 which is 6. All right, so the runtime is going to be all of them, which fits uh, the um, uh, what the question asks us to do, and space-wise, it's also going to be all of them. Uh, so time is all of them, space is all of them. 
but usually for this type of question we can we can do some small little uh, optimization during our implementation to bring down the space um, so the technique is to define a only one array for the output and uh, at the first place, we are going to compute exactly the same how we compute the lag product and just put all the numbers into output. Let's say currently the output is 1, 1, 2, and 6. So instead of defining a separate right product array, we are going to just use a single number in the second pass. So in this way, uh, we are going to bring down the space complexity to be constant regardless of the output so uh, we should all the things ready uh, I think it's good to go for us to turn it into real code so for the coding part make sure that you write the right code and also readable code so let's see how to do it so first of all we define um let's say product array as the output now we are going to compute the left product and store the numbers into product array it should be a for loop but in the first place we need to do some initialization let's say product zero is equal to one which is a placeholder and then uh, we compute the rest of the numbers uh, let's see, i is uh, equal to 1 i is smaller than um, star lens plus plus i so product array i should be equal to nums i minus 1 times the product array i minus 1 so we finish computing the left, ar left product array we defined previously and stored numbers in product array for the output now it's time to compute the rest part so for this one as we said we are just going to define a single number for it let's say red product initialize as 1 so for here, um, what we would do is we can start from the last number or we can start from the last second number. It doesn't matter actually, but we are just going to start from the last number uh, to make it, it seems a little bit clearer to me. Um, I is larger or equal to zero minus minus I. So we are going to product array I times equal to right product and the right product is going to be updated by uh, multiplying the current number in the input array and finally it just returned the product array as output so after we co-complete it's time to do some testing it's a testing part so first of all let's do some sanity check let's see if we have the input as one two three and four uh, what let's see this is the input uh, input number the input num uh, let's see nums is here and the uh, product array is here So first of all, uh, so first uh, element is equal to one. Second one is uh, i i i minus one, which is zero. So it is one times one. Second number, third number is uh, one times two, which is two. Last number is two times three, which is six. Now uh, we have finished the first pass for the array and uh, we are going to update uh, the array 
using the right product. Okay, so now uh, from the last number is six again because it is um, it just times one, and then uh, right. Okay, let's define the right product. Now it is equal to one. And then we calculate uh, the second last number. It is two. Uh, uh, okay, so after the first iteration, we will need to update the right product to be six. And now uh, the second last number in the product array should be updated to be twelve. And uh, add the sorry, it should be a uh, no. So the right product should be updated to be I got I crossed. Sorry. Um, right product is four now. Right product is four now. Um, so it, now it should be two times four, which is eight. And then we are going to update this number to be times the current number, which is four times three, and it is twelve. And then we update the second element in the product array to be twelve. And the further we update the uh, right product to be twelve times two, which is uh, twenty-four. And then we update the first number in the product array so output should be 12 uh, sorry 24 12 8 and 6 now all right so it looks good to me let's give it a shot all right so runtime arrow why it's index okay so okay so my bad um, it's a title all right, so it should work now. And uh, after the sanity checking, we are going to introduce um, some other test cases to bring up the test coverage. But for this one, um, I think not too much because we have some very strong assumptions. Uh, so I would say we should be good for this uh, specific programming question. So thanks for watching. I hope you like this video and find it a little bit helpful. Um, please help subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in the next video.